Hey, welcome to another first time camper video from Keystone RV. Today we're going to discuss RV heat. But before we dig in, remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you receive all our new information. All right, let's dig in. There are two types of furnace ducting in a Keystone RV. Ducted in the floor and flexible ducting. In-floor ducting is just that, it's in the floor. Let's take a look at what we mean. Flexible ducting can be below the floor or above the floor. Flexible ducts can be installed through cabinets, under drawers, and through walls in order to get heat where it's needed. Keystone uses a chassis designed for each floor plan to optimize heating, plumbing, and electrical runs. As a result, we're able to minimize inefficiencies in our ducting. Hey Matt, let's go over a couple of differences of how an RV is built versus a house. Sure. The walls of a camper are quite a bit different than a house in thickness and R value. Insulation in RV's walls, floors, roofs, typically range from an inch to two and a half inches. Insulation in home walls can be four to six inches thick, and home roofs may have a couple feet of blown-in insulation with a huge air gap to dissipate hot and cold air. Homes have three or more times the insulation R value than an RV. Here's another difference in heating to understand. Homes typically have a return air vent in each room of the house, except the kitchen and the bathroom, that pulls the cold air back to the furnace. In an RV, you have just one, and in this unit, it's right here. It's pulling air back to the furnace from the entire unit. So it's necessary to keep the passage doors to the bedrooms and the bathrooms open as much as possible in order to better equalize the temperature throughout the unit. We do realize that in a home, many people sleep with the bedroom door closed. However, in an RV, blocking the exchange of airflow will change the temperature drastically. Also, it is not recommended to block or close off the ducts in the floor as this can decrease efficiency and possibly cause the furnace to malfunction. Bart, go ahead and talk about the fireplace and cold weather camping. Okay, Matt, it is not uncommon to see a fireplace in an RV today, and these can be very beneficial to heating your RV or simply taking the chill off. In some scenarios, it may be all you ever need. If you're a cold weather camper, consider your needs and activities. You may need to consider supplemental forms of heat to offset the temperature differences. As we have learned through the years, people have different needs and activities. We see people from Canada and other colder regions being exposed up to minus 40 degrees, while others in Arizona and Texas experience temperatures reaching above 100 degrees. With these extremes and variable temperatures, it's hard to build one unit that fits everyone's needs out there. So, Outfitting your RV to accommodate a particular need is very common, and there are many additional accessories out there to help you camp better. Three key takeaways that we want you to know. One, an RV is not built like your home. Two, an RV has only one return air vent, so keep the interior doors open as much as possible. And three, depending on your camping needs, you may need to outfit your RV with additional accessories. Hey, if you have any other suggestions for another first time camper video, drop us a line below. If you found this video helpful or have other suggestions to camp better, leave us a comment. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more helpful tips. You can also download the My Keystone app or visit us at keystonerv.com for all of our content. And thanks for watching. I'm gonna do it again. No, I don't think so. You like that? No. Mm -hmm.